Come and leave it there. I was down with the no way up, and I needed some help. Everybody breathing but not living, just existing. Well, and I needed some help. Somebody told me that Jesus will set you free. I tried it for myself and now I know what he did for me.
Can somebody go with me and say these times? A God who is watching over us because we are living in, do you know we're living in an extremely volatile world and we need a God to lean on. But I'm here to report to you you're safe. Grab your word, grab your word. I'm here to report to you that God is still in control. And let's not take it for granted that we can worship him. I want you to worship with all your might and watch the power of God. Go with me. But you know what? I want to go to a word of prayer first. Bow with me. I, I, I need this. Father God, we thank you today. Your superior spirit. Your everlasting love. The fact that you are so compassionate about us. That you brought us to this point in time. Let someone know who may have their head down, lifted up. God still has a plan for you. And it includes you getting into the word and going higher and higher in God. But bless me today to get out of the way that you might speak your word. We give you all the glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalms 19. Psalms 19. When you hear a word from the Psalms, it's usually an exciting word because the Psalms were born out of detrimental situations. Psalms 19. I'm going to read King James. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day utter a speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out to all the world, and their voice has gone to the ends of the earth. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven and his circuit unto the ends of it. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the, uh, rejoicing the heart. The commandments of the Lord are Pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous all together. More are they to be desired than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey in the honeycomb. For the time we have together, I want you to wrap yourself around this thought. Your mind is your weapon. Hashtag D Y M W. Hashtag D W Y M. I got it now. Your mind is your weapon. Hashtag D W Y M. Let's go. I'm going to start this message with two stories. Uh, one that I know about and one I got from a doctor. There were two men relatively the same age. They were both in uh, good physical health as could be seen, but both were diagnosed with stage 2 cancer and told they better do something about it quickly and then medically and scientifically you only have so much so long to live. They gave them about a year. You know doctors only guesstimate. So one man immediately said he made up his mind I'm not going down without a fight. He made up his mind I'm going to beat this thing and so he set out to fight against this diagnosis of cancer and that one year death sentence he was given was almost 16 years ago. For 15 years he has been living. The second man 
From the moment he heard the diagnosis, he fell apart. He thought he was dying. And almost to the day of that year, he died. What happened? Two similar stories, two different outcomes. Can I tell you one more? This is the one that I know personally. There were two women, both of them were widowed. They were both in their mid-40s, had children, had a job, and now were paying all the bills that used to be paid by two people. And But both of them decided, I need to go back to school, I need to get some more education, I need to be able to pay my bills. The first woman said, I got to do this, but she kept putting it off and putting it off. She was sidetracked by the bills and by her jobs and by the regular stresses of life. And finally she said to herself, there is no way I can go back to school. The second woman decided, I'm going back to school. In spite of the kids, in spite of the bills, in spite of the job, she enrolled in school. And three years later, she now has her degree, a teaching certification, and is planning on going back to school. What happened? Well, in both of these stories, here is the bottom line. The person who thought they could did, the person who thought they could not, did not. The Bible says it better, Proverbs 23, 7, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat, he says to thee, but his heart is really not with you. Uh, the, when you look at Proverbs 23, 7, it's one of the 30 wise sayings of Solomon. They're actually called words of the wise. And in these sayings, Solomon put them together to try to encourage people to trust God and to trust and seek wisdom. This is saying number nine. If you read the context of that full verse, and we like to say, um, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. But the rest of that verse, in the context of you need to understand the full meaning is don't eat with a miser or a stingy man because even though he's telling you to eat his sweets and eat his food, inwardly he's counting the cost. His heart is really not with you. And so the text is saying what he really thinks on the inside is who he is. It's powerful to know that not my outward actions but my inward thoughts determine who I really am. And that's how folk get messed up. If you don't think right, you won't live right. If you don't think right, you won't be right. If you allow your thoughts to go astray, you'll never be the person who can handle what's going on in your life. Listen how important Jesus Christ's thoughts are. In Luke 6, 45, he said, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringing forth good things. But an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, bringing forth evil things. But listen to the word. Out of the depths of the heart, the text says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. When the Bible talks about the word heart, Listen to me. Heart is used about a thousand times in the Bible. It's talking about the seat of our emotions. What determines whether we're up or whether we're down is what's going on in our heart. How strong our heart is, which is controlled to our mind. It's always, when it talks spiritually, talking about how our heart is the center of how we survive. Many of us are putting the wrong things in our heart. Proverbs 4, 23 says... Guard your heart above all things, for out of it are the issues of life. Guard your mind out of all things, because our thoughts are what determine how we shall live. It's that simple. I'm telling you right now, if you're thinking you're defeated, you're defeated. Watching me now. If you're thinking I can't go any higher, if you think it's over, listen to me. Whatever you're thinking about, that's what's determining where you are as a person right now. You may be trying to fool people by your outward actions, but on the inside, you're still walking around with that defeated spirit and your thoughts are killing you instead of strengthening you. Our minds are our weapons. Our minds guide our thoughts. Our minds guide our direction.
direction. Our thoughts and our mind guide what kind of victory everybody's going through. Somebody said, I'm depressed and I'm going through this. I'm not saying you're not. All I'm telling you is you want to have a blessing. You want to be better and you need to change the way you think before God can change the circumstances that you're living in. Why do you think defeated when God has already blessed you to go through multiple, multiple trials and multiple times? And yet, we won't understand that if we think right, we'll live right. Positive thoughts means positive life. Negative thoughts mean negative life. When the world say positive and negative, they're not talking about what we're talking about. We're talking about what God is talking about. When you look at the Bible and you see Isaiah 26 and 3, here's what God says. I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. That's not just some good feelings. That is a supernatural, demon-busted, mountain-moving kind of peace. How many of you know you've been in a situation of darkness that was about to destroy you, but you got a thought of God on your mind? You begin to think and worship and believe that God can get you out. And as soon as you did, your thoughts lifted you up. That is the problem. Our thoughts are weapons. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. We like to talk about this verse, but that whole book, Paul was, I believe, giving his own self-therapy. But in that fourth chapter, in that eighth verse, he even told us how to think as believers. You know the verse. It says, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, Think on these things, and the peace of God, which passeth understanding, shall keep your hearts and mind. Do I have to unpack that? Did you hear what God said? The way you get out of your trial is redirect your thoughts to another place, and deliverance will come. And if you don't redirect your thoughts, the enemy's going to start beating your mind. Now listen to me. The enemy's going to still have you. Why are you watching me? You got all those dead, negative thoughts in your mind. The enemy's going to keep beating you down until you realize. of deliverance and God will bring me through. Second Timothy, Timothy was timid and Paul had to tell Timothy in Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 for God is not given us a spirit of fear. Why does it come so many times? If God hasn't given it to you, why do you have it? It's because we have not figured out. I got to clear my thoughts. Watch this, watch this. I'm going to help you today. How do I clear my thoughts? But he's given us a sound mind. God said, I have the capacity for a sound mind. But with all of this, I just said, all these powerful scriptures about your thoughts. You already know half of them. Houston, we have a problem. Here is the problem. In our text, this glorious psalm, this, this magnificent psalm, this psalm that lays out the worth and glory and law of God is going to show us because at the end of this psalm, in verse 14, the psalmist came to a conclusion that's going to help us learn how to make our minds our weapon. He said, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Can I help you? Is what you're thinking right now, is that acceptable in God's sight? Does it honor God? When you lay down and give up, does it honor God? Can't you at least take a moment to just say thank you and worship God to the point to your mind changes? Here is what this text is saying. How did he get to the word? The word is let. It's not going to happen by itself. you got to let those thoughts be flooded in your mind that tells you God is good, God is strong, God is able, God is worthy. Come on, somebody, right now. I need you to lift up in your living room. Watch your mouth start giving new words when you start speaking the thoughts that go through your mind. Many people say, doesn't my words, uh, my confession uh, control me? I heard life and death are in the power of the tongue. Yes, but life and death in the power of the tongue means words got to come from somewhere and the words yourself. Let the words that I speak, let the stuff I meditate on be acceptable in God's sight, who is my strength and my redeemer. 
Here is our problem. With all the words I know, you don't want to listen to me with everything I just said, and you might be sitting there saying, that's I know those scriptures, but with all we know, why are we still so fearful? With all we know, why do we still live below? Why are we still down? You got to raise up right now. Let the thought come through. Let it come out of your mouth that I'm already delivered. I challenge somebody to start speaking deliverance. Watch demons run. I challenge somebody to start thinking I'm better than I was. Watch how the sickness gets healed as you put new thoughts in your body. As you put new thoughts in your mind. New thoughts in your body. As you lay that divine hand on stuff and you start about the Holy Spirit of God coming down. You change your life. But many of us have lost blessings, missed deliverance, lived miserably. Oh, I got you now. You're with me. Lived to the point that God in heaven is saying, what's going on? Your mind was not being used as a weapon. That's why I created the hashtag. Don't waste your mind. Next time you get in a battle, God said your mind is a weapon he's giving you when it's filled with his word. Why are you sitting there crying, wasting your weapon? Why are you wasting your mind? Hashtag DWY. Don't waste your mind. You can sit there and be glad for somebody else delivering, somebody else deliver, somebody else's anointing, but what about your anointing? What about what God gave you? What about said to you, right now, I'm talking to you right now. You better raise up and get back in the position God created you to be in. Don't waste your mind. Your mind filled with God's word can clear any darkness. Your mind filled with God's word can defeat any devil. Your mind filled with God's word will transcend this earth and take you to a place of deliverance and power the next time you're in a position of crying and fearful and fretting. Turn your thoughts around. Turn your situation around. This psalmist gave us the key in this psalm. Somebody said, I thought when he started talking about the mind, he was going to preach from this passage to that passage. No, the real passage is that when we see the reality of we can trust and depend on God, and this sermon tells us in no uncertain way, this psalmist tells us, why we can be powerful with God. How did he get to the conclusion of let the words of my mouth meditation of my heart? Because everything that led up to that told him about who this God was that he was serving. Let's read the text. Let's get into it. The first thought that this psalmist will teach us about making our mind a weapon is to understand the supremacy of God through his creation work. I'll say it again. The supremacy of God through his creation work. The psalmist starts off with the creation, moves into the power of his law, and then moves to the place where God's word has been controlling us, even when we didn't know God was controlling us. He said, the heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament showeth his handiwork. Day and today, other speech, night and tonight, show of knowledge. The firmament is the universe, the world. It's all of everything that we can consume is God's firmament, and that's God's power. But first of all, it says it shows the glory of God. God's power comes from the fact that we understand God's glory says he can do anything. Jeremiah says, is there anything, Jeremiah 32, 27, I am the Lord, behold, is there anything too hard for me? Jeremiah was going through some trips, you know, he was going through things, serving God just like you and me, but then he had, God had to remind him, is there really anything too hard for me? Somebody say no. There's nothing too hard for God. He can deliver. You see, he can heal. You see, he brought you out. Come on, tell yourself, what I'm going through now can't be too hard for God because I already have in my history so many things that he's done that I thought was impossible because Jesus Christ himself picked the thought up in Matthew 19.26. Jesus beheld in Matthew 19.26 and he said, with man this may be impossible, but with God all things are possible. Somebody needs to know right now, whatever you're going through, if it's in that all thing, 
I'm just here to shake you up. Whatever you're going through, it's just an all thing to God. It's one of those things God can just move on in a moment. But while you're sitting there, your thought had to tell you it was impossible. Now flip your thoughts and say it's not impossible. I can rise up. My child can be blessed. My finances will turn around. This sickness is not unto death. You got to tell your own self. You got to start thinking thoughts that flows through you until you are a vessel and you have that weapon because you're a vessel of the Holy Ghost that spouting words that show who God is. And it talks about the heavens declare his glory, his glory, his glory, his glory. Think about God's glory, his glory, his self-existence, his Perpetual self-existence. His isness. He always has been. His uh, royalty. His uh, love. His compassion. In every case, it shows his supreme strength. His power. He speaks words and things are created. Why in the world do you think something too happy? So think something can't work for you and God just speaks it and it happens because you got to allow a thought to come through your mind that says God's glory is there. Matter of fact, when Moses said, they may ask me who it is that sent me. Remember God told Moses to go and tell his people he's going to, he's heard their cry, he's going to deliver them. And what did God say? Just tell them I am. I am that I am. What, what do you mean God? I am your deliverance. I am your peace. I am. God just said, I, my glory is, I just am. Nothing can stop me. And because his glory is, he protects us by his glory. That's why you can make your, your mind your weapon. Look what happened. The children of Israel, you know the story where uh, they were getting delivered and ten plagues had happened and they were getting delivered and they were going through the desert and all of a sudden, God said, I'm going to make Pharaoh come after you. They got to the edge of the Red Sea, and there was Pharaoh, horses coming. And they turned around and looked and said, because there was no graves in Egypt, you brought us out here to die. And Moses looked at them, and God gave Moses instruction. He told them, you're going to move forward. But look, right now, stand still and see the deliverance of the Lord. The Egyptians you see today, you shall see no more. God starts speaking prophetically that I, I haven't left you yet. I'm still keeping you. And he told them to do that. And he put up a wall of fire at night and a cloud of the day, a pillar of cloud, so he could lead his children through the desert. When Pharaoh got closer, I hadn't seen this before, in the 14th chapter, verse 19 and 20. I need you to read them because it shows you the miraculous power of God. It said in the 19th verse that when Pharaoh was there and God had to part the Red Sea, so God was having the Red Sea divide, you know, all down the sea, we saw the walls of water. But while he was doing that, Pharaoh and his chariots, on one side, it was all darkness, verse 19 says. 19 and 20, look at it, said there was darkness on his side, but light on the side of the Israelites. Say, what God? God said, I'm going to make that enemy... See darkness. He won't be able to touch you, but your light, your way is going to be lit up. You're going to have a light because I'm protecting you with my glory. When my glory protects you, the enemy can't even find a way to get to you. Hallelujah, somebody. Somebody better say right now, speak this word. Come on, get the thought in your mind. I'm covered with God's glory and nothing the enemy's doing can harm me. Somebody say, but I feel something, Pastor. Oh, but you know what you got to do? Shake that. Your circumstances. This is real. He said, God said, My glory is up. And then uh, 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18 says, And as we behold this glory, as we start trusting God, He said, We turn from glory to glory. Those of us who learn how to trust God is because we went from one, that's what I'm telling you to work. We went from one phase of glory to another phase of glory. There was a phase where I was scared. Come on, somebody testify. Now there's a phase where I'm standing up boldly, letting the enemy know you're in the wrong house. You got the wrong person and you cannot do anything to me. So the psalmist says that the heavens declare the glory of God. Then it says, day unto day showeth uh, his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech and night unto night showeth knowledth. Watch this. Day unto day uttereth speech. How does the day speak? Oh, I'm glad you said. Next we got to honor God's faithfulness, the psalmist said. We're still talking about the supremacy of God and his creation. God continually to make a day happen. If we sat there and had to think about all the times we thought our day was over, God was still in glory making the morning.
morning. Come on. There's nothing greater than going through a dark night of trial and tragedy. And you need to know that a night is just not one night. Sometimes a night can be a month. A night can be a year. A night can be three years. But you got to learn how to hold on. One of the greatest things we learn as believers is hold on to what? Hold on to the morning. How come I can hold on to the morning? Because the text says, day unto day, God shows his faithfulness. Day unto day, God says, no matter what happens, nothing can stop the morning from coming. Oh, I just said something. Look at me, somebody going through a trial. Nothing can stop your morning from coming. Sorrow may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. He said, there's nothing hid from the heat 
thereof. God says, my power, the sun symbolizes his power. Nothing can stop his power. Then he goes to the supremacy of God's word. First, the superiority of God himself in his word. Now, the, the, superior, the supremacy of God in his word. Now, the superiority of God in his word. Look at the text. The word of God. The word of God. There is nothing as powerful as the word of God. 66 books. 40 writers. Not related. All writing the same message. Anointing. The word of God. Never fails. Isaiah 40 and 8. The grass wither. The flower faded. But the word of God stands forever. Matthew 24, 35. Heaven and earth will pass away. But God's word, y'all hear this? God's word is going to stand forever. There's nothing that can stand in the place of God's word. Hebrews 4 and 12, the word of God is quick and living. It divides the sunder between the soul and the spirit and the bone and the marrow. God's word never fails. It won't return. The word! And he gives us these points to the word. Let me say this. As we look at this, the superiority of God's word. And yet, we don't let our mind be a weapon because we don't have the word. Listen to me. There was this scene out of the movie Rush Hour where Chris Tucker was tricked by the FBI to go watch Jackie Chan who was coming in as another police officer and they wanted him out of their place, out of their hair so they could do their case. They didn't want him involved in investigating the case. So they tricked Chris Walker into getting him. Chris Walker walked up as Jackie Chan's plane landed. He was speaking Chinese to the people. Chris, well, Chris Tucker said, oh my God. Chris Tucker said, uh, you don't speak English. He looked at him. Do you speak English? And then he said those words that we all know. Do you understand the words coming out of my mouth? And he said, do you understand the words coming out of my mouth? Listen to me. That's what God in his psalms is saying to you today. Do you understand the words coming out of your mouth? They're weak words. They're words of defeat. They're words that tell you you can't make it. When you need words that tell you you can be delivered. So the words coming out of your mouth have to be words of power. Listen to this text. The law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul. Verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul. Here's what he's saying. Nothing else is perfect. God's word is perfect for anything you want. Somebody say God's word is perfect. Anything else you trust in is like a lottery ticket. You're buying it and hoping you hit it. But if you got the word of God, it is perfect for your situation. Look at that. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple, the B portion of part seven. Look what he's saying. He's saying, my testimony is what keeps me saying. It's his word. Any of you right now going through something, I dare you to go back and pull a testimony and watch deliverance come right where you are. Because you got a testimony that says, this testimony makes wise the simple. I won't go under. Verse 8, the statutes of the Lord are right. They rejoice the heart. There's a word that makes me rejoice in the blessing of God. There's a word of sorrow and door for a night, but joy comes in the morning. The Lord is my light and my salvation. He shall supply your need. I don't know what it is, but there's a word that ought to make you rejoice. Can't you get a thought and turn yourself around and learn how to rejoice? The commandments of the Lord are pure. When you understand the value of the word of God, your eyes will be enlightened. The commandments of the Lord are pure. Enlightening eyes. Once my eyes are open, I don't want to do everything God says, but once I do, I learn God's way is the best way. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. Once I fear God, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Once I fear God, I live longer, I endure, because what I do honors God. And the judgments of God are true and righteous altogether. All I'm saying is, I am so glad, for the hand, that God judges me. How many of y'all know God has kept some secrets? How many of y'all know God has covered you and protected you? Out of everybody that judged me, his judgment is right. I don't understand it. It's not balanced. But somebody praise God for the way he has judged you and blessed you, even though... You did not deserve it. But once you understand these seven, this power of God's word, it says it's sweeter than honey in the honeycomb. Once the Bible becomes that to you, you get 
blessed. I got to close. That's the supremacy of God's word. The superiority of God. The supremacy of God, excuse me, in his creation, his creation work. The superiority of God's word. The word is above everything. Else. He's put the word above everything. And finally, when we understand the standard of doing things God's way. Here it is. Look what the text says happen. You want to have a powerful life, a powerful mind? Look at the text. Verse 11 says, by them, by what? By his words, a servant is warned. God warns me. And then it says he keeps me so he can reward me. What do I mean by God warns me? He lets me know that this is not the end. God had you tune in this morning so you would know. It's just a warning saying, look, you're slipping. You, you, you leaving. You know, come on, you had a better praise than that. Come on, you don't need to repent. You want to let me know. It says that he cleanses our errors of our ways. He lets me know I got to reveal my secret faults. And then it says, he helps me defeat my presumptuous sins. This thing is so good, I can't, I can't do it all. And then we get to our verse, verse 14. Let the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. The psalmist said, when you understand who God is, your mind is a weapon. His supremacy by just what he created, your mind is a weapon. When you understand the power of his word, converting you just from the perfection of his word, your mind becomes a weapon. Then when you say, you know what, I'm going to live God's way, he starts warning us and keeping us and blessing us. Then his word becomes sweet like honey. And then I can say, I'm going to let every word I think, everything I meditate on, bless God. We close this with some money. This man fell in love, got him with a girlfriend, told his mom, I think this is the one I'm going to marry. She said, well, you ought to invite her over for dinner then. The man said, I'll do that. After the week went by, the girl was supposed to come out for dinner. The mom said, how did it go? I know you really love that girl. He said, it was a disaster. The mom said, what happened? She didn't show up. He said, no, she didn't want to cook. Okay, I didn't want to lose you. He invited her over for dinner. He expected her to cook. The mom was saying, cook her some dinner or purchase a dinner. Why did I do that? Because some of you, it wasn't a terrible night. He had terrible thoughts. Maybe you already blessed, but you weren't thinking. God was supposed to do this when God said, I couldn't do it because you didn't change your thoughts. Pastor Duncan's saying, I love you. God bless you. During this turbulent time, Make your mind your weapon. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting your soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise and simple. The commandments of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. Just continue to read that until you can say, I got my weapon set. God bless you. Take it to him and leave it there. I was down, but with the no way. I needed some help Everybody Breathing but not living Just existing Well, and I needed some help Somebody told me that Jesus Will set you free 